Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture 28 on measure and integration. Uh, if you recall, we had started looking at uh, the computation of uh, product measure of a set E in the product sigma algebra and we had shown this can be uh, computed via um, the sections of uh, the set E, integrating the sections and taking the measures. So, let us recall this uh, result and then uh, we will continue to generalize this result for uh, functions which are non-negative and uh, integrable functions. So, let us recall the result that we had proved uh, last time. Namely, uh, if x a mu and y b nu are two sigma finite measure spaces and uh, the product sigma algebra uh, product uh, space is x cross y a times b and mu cross nu is the product measure space, then we showed that for any set E in the product sigma algebra. Uh, the measure mu cross nu of E uh, can be computed by either taking the section of the set E at a point x and that gives us a subset of uh, the set y and we showed that this is in the sigma algebra you can take the measure of this section. So, this becomes a, the function of uh, the variable x and then you can integrate out this uh, function with respect to mu to get the product measure or uh, equivalently you can take the y section of the set E that gives you a subset of uh, x which is a measurable set and then you can take the measure of mu measure of that that gives a function of uh, y and then integrate out that with respect to y to get the measure of the set E. So, this result we want to reinterpret as follows. See the measure of the set uh, E x can be written as um, the integral of the indicator function of uh, the set E with respect to um, the product measure. So, the mu cross nu of the set E is nothing but the integral of the indicator function of the set E on one hand. On the other hand, if you look at the x section or the y sections, they are nothing but the indicator functions of uh, uh, the set E again. So, the when you take the integration with respect to y, that means, you are fixing x. So, you are looking at the section uh, of E at uh, x. So, nu of E x is nothing but the integral over y of the indicator function of E uh, with respect to the variable y and similarly, uh, the other variable. So, as we had mentioned, uh, the importance of the result, this result lies in the fact that the indicator function of a set E is a function of two variables and to find its integral with respect to the product measure, what we can do is we can fix one of the variables say x, this becomes a function of one variable y and we uh, one shows that this is integrable with respect to nu. So, when you integrate out with respect to nu the variable y, this is a function of x which again can be integrated with respect to mu and this integration gives you the uh, integral of the indicator function of e. So, the important thing is that here when you are integrating with respect to y, the variable x is fixed. So, this is only a function of the variable y. So, for every x fix you treat it as a function of the variable y, integrate that out and then integrate out that integral with respect to the other variable and similarly, we can interchange x and y and get the result. So, we what we want to show is today is that this result is true for all non-negative measurable functions on uh, the uh, product space x cross y. So, the theorem we want to prove is the following namely, if f is a function on the product space x cross y and uh, it is a non-negative function which is. So, f is a non-negative measurable function on x cross y is measurable with respect to the product sigma algebra. Then the following statements hold namely, if we fix one of the variables say x. So, if x naught is fixed, then consider the function f of x comma y naught and similarly, y goes to f of x naught y. So, in the for the function f of x y, 
either you fix the variable y at y 0 or you fix the variable x at x 0 and treat it as a function of one variables only, then these functions are measurable on x and y respectively. So, what we are saying is that for a function of two variables, if it is measurable with respect to the product sigma algebra, then fixing either of the variables gives you a function of other one variable, which is measurable on the corresponding basis with respect to the corresponding sigma algebras. And these are non-negative functions, so you can integrate them out. So, if you integrate this function x going to f of x y naught with respect to x mu, then that gives you a function which depends on y. So, the function y going to integral over x of f x y d mu x. So, you integrate it out the variable x, this gives you a function of y and similarly, you integrate out f x y with respect to the variable y, you get a function with respect to x. So, the claim is these two are well defined non negative measurable functions on the respective spaces. And finally, these are non negative measurable. So, you can integrate them out with respect to the resp corresponding variables. So, if you integrate out them, so first integrate with respect to y and then with respect to x that is same as integrating first with respect to x and then with respect to y and both are equal to the integral of the uh, function f of x y with respect to the product sigma algebra. So, this gives uh, an extension of the earlier result and so it says that for non negative measurable functions, if you want to integrate with respect to the product sigma algebra uh, product measure, then you can do it one variable at a time. So, these uh, uh, in the integrals these two integrals are called the iterated integrals. So, the claim is that for a non negative uh, measurable function, uh, the integral with respect to the product measure is equal to the two iterated integrals. Once again, the importance being you are integrating one variable at a time. So, let us prove this result. So, this proof is going to be built up step by step and uh, this is what I call as the simple function technique. So, uh, the idea is that when f is the indicator function uh, of a set, this result is true by the earlier uh, result on product uh, measures. And then by looking at, because all the integral, everything involved involves integrals. So, an integration being uh, a linear operation, we will get that from uh, that this result is true for non-negative uh, simple measurable functions. And once it is true for non-negative simple measurable functions, a um, application of monotone convergence theorem will give us that uh, the result is true for all non-negative measurable functions on the product space. So, that is the approach basically we are going to uh, follow and this is what I call as uh, the simple uh, function technique. When you want to prove something for non-negative measurable functions on a measure space, verify it for the indicator functions, verify it for the non-negative non simple measurable functions and then verify it for the limits of non-negative simple measurable functions. So, let us prove this. So, the step 1 is that the required claim holds when f is the indicator function of a product uh, uh, indicator function of a set E in the product uh, sigma algebra. So, uh, let us uh, look at that. That was what we have already uh, shown when E is. So, step 1 when E is an element in the product sigma algebra, we had already shown that the product measure mu cross nu of E on one hand is equal to you take the indicator function of E and integrate out with respect to x d mu and then integrate out uh, that with respect to the variable y, so d nu and that is same as you first integrate out the indicator function x y with respect to d nu. That means, keeping the variable x fix, you are integrating with respect to y and then compute the integral of that with respect to the variable x. So, these two are equal and the middle thing, if you recall, we said it is equal to the indicator function, integral of the indicator function of E with respect to the product sigma algebra. So, this is precisely saying that the claim holds for f equal to the indicator function of a set E, E belonging to the product sigma algebra. So, this is step 1 and now from here 
we want to uh, go to step 2. So, let us, uh, so step 2 is let us take a function. So, step 2 the required claim holds for non negative simple measurable functions for S f equal to S a non negative simple measurable function on x cross y. So, let us take. So, what does the function look like? So, a non negative simple function s on the product space looks like sigma a i indicator function of some sets e i, where i is 1 to n and these e i's are sets in the product sigma algebra a times b and their union of e i is their pairwise disjoint and their union is equal to x cross y. Right? And now, by step 1, what does step 1 say? Step 1 says, for each e i the claim holds. So, step 1 says, for every i equal to 1, 2 and so on n, the integral of the indicator function of e i with respect to d mu cross nu, on one hand it is equal to the integral over x integral over y of indicator function E x y d nu and d mu and also equal to the integral over y integral over x of the indicator function of E d uh, mu and then d nu. So, this is what we know. Now, let us just observe because this is true for every i and integration is linear. So, that means, if I multiply, uh, I can multiply throughout by a i. So, if I multiply by a i, so I can multiply here by a i. So, this is e i. So, if I multiply, so this is a i and I can multiply by a i and I can multiply here by a i and then take the summation. So, sum over i, then so summation over i summation over i and here will be summation over i. right? Now, this summation integration being linear, I can take the summation inside. Okay? So, when I take this summation inside the integral and then again take it inside, I will get summation of a i times indicator function of e i integration with respect to nu and then integral with respect to mu is equal to this I take it inside that will be summation of a i. So, let us just write that. Uh, this is uh, more of writing than understanding. So, when I do this summation and take the summations inside, I will get integral over x, integral over y of summation i equal to 1 to n a i indicator function of e i d nu d mu is equal to. So, that is equal to and this summation inside will give me integral over x cross y of summation a i indicator function of e i d mu cross nu and the last one will give me integral over y integral over x of summation i 1 to n a i indicator function of e i d mu d nu. So, this is just uh, using the property that uh, for every indicator function of a set, the result is true and integration is linear. So, uh, the result is true for finite linear combinations of these things also. So, this gives us uh, and this is precisely my function s. So, this says integral over x, integral over y of s x y d nu d mu is equal to the integral over the product space. So, this is the function s. So, s of x y d mu cross nu and that is also equal to uh, the other iterated integral, integral over y, integral over x of s x y d uh, mu of x d nu over, uh, we have already uh, done it, this is over y 
So, over y that should be nu actually and this should be mu sorry because this was over uh, this was over x. So, that should be no that was ok that was d mu and this is d nu. So, uh, this is over x so d mu and d nu. So, that is ok. So, this says that the result holds. So, this proves the second step namely the claim holds for f a non negative simple measurable function. So, now uh, from here to go to general non negative functions step 3 says we should be able to uh, prove the result when f is. Uh, so, let us take f uh, on x cross y to r star f non negative f a times um, measurable with respect to the uh, um, product sigma algebra. So, now we uh, look at the characterization of non negative uh, measurable functions f being non negative measurable implies that there exists a sequence S n of non negative of non negative simple measurable functions S n of x increasing to f of uh, S n of x y increasing to f of x y for every x y belonging to uh, the product set x cross y. So, that is by because of the fact that uh, this is by the. So, this uh, is by the fact that uh, for every non negative measurable function there is a, a sequence of non negative simple measurable functions converging to it. Now, by step 2. So, by step 2 we know that for every S n the corresponding result holds. So, what does that mean? That means, for every S n uh, the integral of the fu non negative function S n x y d mu cross nu x y is equal to the iterated integral. So, let us write say for example, integral over x integral over y S n of x y d nu d mu and similarly, the other iterated integral. Now, what we are going to do is uh, observe the fact that uh, for every S n this result is true and S n is a non negative uh, sequence of uh, non negative uh, simple measurable functions increasing to f. So, by the definition of the integral this one converges to the integral of f x y d mu cross nu of x y. So, this is by the effect uh, of uh, monotone convergence. This is not really monotone convergence theorem, this is actually uh, the definition of the integral. So, if um, f is a uh, non negative measurable function, then its integral is defined as the limit of any sequence of non negative simple measurable functions increasing to it. So, that is by the definition. On the other hand, we will compute this integral and show it is the corresponding iterated integral of uh, uh, the function f. So, let us look at uh, this integral. So, integral over x, integral over y, S n of x y d nu d mu. So, this the we want to show claim that this converges to integral over um, x integral over y of f x y d nu d mu. So, this is what we want to show and once that is shown. So, on one hand this uh, converges right. So, this converges to this iterated integral on the other hand this converges to this integral of f. So, these two will be equal and will be true. So, let us uh, try to prove that this iterated integral converges to this iterated integral. So, for that let us observe first that S n. So, note. So, here is the are the steps for proving this. So, first of all let us uh, try to prove that integral over y 
uh, with respect to nu converges to corresponding integral. So, for that let us note that S n of x y is increasing to f of x y for every x and y. So, if we fix if we fix uh, x then we get a function y going to S n of x y for every y belonging to y. And because S n uh, itself is increasing, so this sequence of functions we already know these are measurable functions. Okay. These are uh, measurable functions uh, for every simple function we had seen that if you fix one of the variables the other one is a uh, measurable function. Okay. For simple functions that is true. Um, first of all this is clear that for fix x this is an increasing sequence. of non negative functions. Okay. So, this is a, a sequence of uh, increasing sequence of non negative functions and each one of them is a measurable function on y and second. So, second observation is that each one of them. So, the function y going to S n of x y is a measurable function measurable function. Well, that is uh, uh, in a sense obvious because, so uh, to see this uh, we note that, so for, for this so observation is, so let us say S n, so let S n be equal to something. So, sigma say let us say it is uh, A i n indicator function of E i and for some i equal to 1 to um, some indexing set 1 to um, m n. Okay. Then for every fix uh, for every fixed uh, x, so for x fixed y going to the indicator function of e i and x y is measurable. So, that we have already observed. Okay, that, that is a measurable function while well, computing the product measure we saw that this is. So, each one of them is each one of them is measurable with respect to the product sigma algebra because it is the indicator function of a set and um, uh, for every fixed x this will be a measurable function on y. So, there will be the sections. Okay. So, that will be the measurable uh, scalar multiple of a measurable function is measurable and the sum of measurable functions is measurable. So, this uh, is an obvious fact that the for a simple uh, measurable function uh, S n, if we fix one of the variables in the other variable, it becomes a measurable function. So, this is a, a measurable function. Okay. So, this, so that means for x fix, so what we have gotten is for x fix the sequence S n x y over n is a sequence is a sequence of non negative B measurable functions on Y and also it is increasing. In fact, it increases to so what does it function? It increases because S n increases to F. So, when we fix one of the variables x, this is going to increase to the function f of x y, x fix as a function of y. So, increases to the function y going to f of x y. So, is a perfect setting for uh, application of monotone convergence theorem. So, by monotone convergence theorem we get the following. So, by monotone convergence theorem we get, so to the this applied monotone convergence theorem. So, by monotone convergence theorem, the integrals S n x y d nu y over y limit of that must be equal to integral of f x y with respect to d nu y. So, this is what we get monotone theorem. Of course, for every x fix 
So, for every x fixed, we get that this limit must be equal to this. right? So, that means what? That means this function, so this is a function of x. So, that implies that if I look at x going to y f of x y d nu y, if we treat this as a function of x, then it is a limit of these functions. Okay? Limit of non-negative uh, simple uh, uh, integrals of uh, non-negative uh, simple uh, functions. So, that means that this function is measurable. So, that implies, okay. so uh, this implies that uh, this function is non-negative measurable. It is a non-negative measurable function. Okay. And this is a non-negative measurable function and it is a limit of the sequence of non-negative measurable functions. So, by star I can apply again another application of again another application of monotone convergence theorem. So, this limit of uh, this on the left hand side the limit of integrals of uh, S n with respect to nu that also is a limit of measurable function. So, this itself is a measurable function with respect to x okay. and because S n are increasing these integrals are also increasing. Okay. So, this is so if we call okay. So, this limit is equal to this. So, now what we are saying is another application of monotone convergence theorem to the fact that the if you look at the sequence okay, of measurable functions, this is a measurable function. Okay. So, integral of that, so uh, let us uh, write. So, the, the function x going to this is a non negative measurable function. So, what is left to be proved? We want to integrate this with respect to mu. Now, so, that is what we are saying that to this we apply monotone convergence theorem. So, we will get that limit of these functions is this function. So, integral limit of the integrals. So, this is limit n going to infinity integrals of this function. So, integral over x of this functions, these functions are S n x y d nu y d mu x. So, this limit of this must be equal to uh, integral of this with respect to x again by monotone convergence theorem. So, let us uh, write that. So, this is equal to integral over x integral over y of S n x y d nu y d mu x. So, this limit is equal to this. Okay. But on the other hand, we had seen that on the other hand we had seen that this uh, iterated integral for S n okay, that is equal to the double integral. So, this is one thing of one observation okay. also. So, let us look at the other fact. So, what is the other fact? So, also we have that integral over x integral over y S n x y d nu y d mu x for simple uh, non negative simple measurable functions the claim holds that means this is equal to the double integral uh, the integral over x cross y of s n x y with respect to the product measure mu cross nu. Okay. So, this is because we have already proved in step 2 that the result holds for non negative simple measurable functions. Okay. And now, if I uh, if I look at, uh, so this uh, this result is equal to this. So, limit of this must be equal to limit of that. Okay. So, implies the limit n going to infinity of this left hand side must be equal to limit n going to infinity of the right hand side. So, this one and that is coming here, but limit of the left hand side. Okay we have already seen is equal to 
the limit of the left hand side we have already seen it is equal to this and what is the limit of the right hand side s n is a sequence. So, we have already seen that s n is a sequence of non negative simple functions increasing to f. So, this must be equal to integral x cross y of f x y d mu cross mu. So, that proves that this must be equal to this. So, that proves that uh, um, the step 3 proves that the integral of f x y with respect to um, uh, integral of okay, let us just see how we proved that. So, what we have shown is this limit must be equal to this and what was that limit of uh, that quantity. So, what we have shown is that integral of d mu cross nu okay, is equal to over x cross y is equal to uh, limit n going to infinity of integral over x integral over y of s n x y d nu y d mu x. So, this is what we have uh, proved just now that this uh, okay, this limit on one hand side was this other hand side was this. So, limit of these two quantities must be equal. So, this is what we have proved, but this quantity let us see what is this. So, note that see s n for every y fix was increasing. So, just this look at the sequence for every x fix that is an increasing sequence of non negative measurable functions increasing to the function f of x y. So, monotone convergence theorem says this inner integral okay, converges to integral of y f of x y d nu y right that is what uh, we had already observed. And then again this is a sequence of non negative simple uh, non negative measurable functions the application of monotone convergence theorem gives us that integral of uh, this limit of that must be equal to d mu of x. So, that says that the double integral of the non negative simple function is equal to the iterated integral of the non negative measurable function iterated first with respect to nu and then with respect to mu. And we can interchange uh, x and y. So, same arguments you will imply. So, that will say that this is also equal to integral over y integral over x of f of x y d nu y d mu x. So, basically, so let us just uh, uh, go through the ideas in the proof that basically uh, this uh, proof is an application of uh, uh, the fact that integral for a non negative simple function is uh, built from the limits of integrals of uh, non negative simple uh, measurable functions. So, uh, and that fact is uh, used very effectively because we know that the corresponding result is uh, true for indicator functions and integration is linear. So, that uh, allows us to say that from the indicator functions you can go to non negative simple measurable functions by just taking uh, scalar multiplications and additions of characteristic functions. So, that will give us that the result is true for non negative simple measurable functions and then uh, just an application some uh, suitable applications uh, of monotone convergence theorem will give us that the integral um, of, of a non negative measurable function um, on the product space can be computed via the iterated integrals. Let us just go through this proof uh, uh, through the slides once again, so that we have a clear idea what we are doing. So, the step 1 uh, that the required claim holds when f is the indicator function of e. Okay? That is the previous uh, theorem that we have proved. And step 2, the required claim holds when f is a non negative simple measurable function. So, from step 1 to step 2, one goes uh, via one goes via the fact that uh, integrals are linear operations. Okay? And then one goes to step 3 that the required claim holds when f is a non negative measurable function. So, that requires applications of 
uh, basically uh, applications of monotone convergence theorem. So, step 3 is the crucial one where a lot of uh, applications are of monotone convergence theorem are uh, used. So, let us just go through that again. So, let S n be a sequence of non negative simple measurable functions such that S n increases to f. So, that is by the fact that f is a non negative measurable function. So, now let us fix x. Okay. So, then the sequence S n x, x is fixed. So, in the variable y is a sequence of non negative simple measurable functions on y and it increases to the function f of x y okay, for x fix. So, point wise S n x dot as a S x fix S n x as a function of y increases to the function f x as a function of y. So, an application, so this is increasing, so an application of monotone convergence, uh, um, so an uh, monotone convergence theorem is not required here. So, this is a limit of increasing sequence of measurable functions. So, that says that the function y going to f of x y is a non negative measurable function, because this function is a limit of measurable function. So, first fact being used is that limits of measurable functions is a measurable uh, function. And now, we can also apply monotone convergence theorem to conclude that the integral, the iterated integral of S n must come converge to the iterated integral of f with respect to y. So, that is the first uh, application of monotone convergence theorem that for the non negative measurable function f for the variable x fix, its integral with respect to the variable y is well defined because this is a non negative measurable function and it is equal to limit with respect to n of the non negative the iterated integral of the non negative simple uh, measurable functions S n with respect to y. And now, this result also says that this equality also says that this the right hand side treated as a function of x. Okay. So, that means that converges to this integral right? and by the fact that the required result holds for non negative simple measurable functions, this, this function integral of S n with respect to y is a measurable function of x. So, here we are using the step 2. So, this is a sequence of measurable functions converging to a function. So, that means this integral must be a measurable function. So, again limits of measurable functions are measurable. So, that gives you that x going to integral over y f x y d y. So, the iterated integral of f with respect to y is a measurable function with respect to x and it is non negative. Okay. And once again this is a non negative function and is a limit of these integrals uh, limits of these measurable functions. So, another monotone convergence theorem application gives that integral of the iterated integral of uh, uh, the integral of S n with respect to y its integral with respect to x must come to the corresponding integral of f with respect to x. So, here we are applying uh, a monotone convergence theorem that the integral of x integral of integral over x of the integral of f with respect to y must come must be limit of uh, the corresponding integrals with respect to the non negative simple functions. And now, come back and for non negative simple functions we know the result is true. So, this iterated integral must be equal to the double integral. So, that says so this is equal to the double integral right. And now, S n is a sequence of non negative measurable functions on the product space. So, this again by either you can say application of monotone convergence theorem or just by the definition this limit uh, must be. So, this is equal to this and the limit of that must be equal to the integral of the uh, function f uh, over x cross y. So, that says the corresponding result holds. So, this iterated integral of f is equal to the double integral of f with respect to mu cross nu. And similarly, the other uh, thing can be proved, you can interchange the variables x and y. So, this result is true. So, this is the result um, which is called Fubini's theorem 1, which says, so this is uh, the first Fubini's theorem, which says that 
for a non-negative measurable function on the product space, if you want to integrate, find its integral with respect to the product measure, you can do it by integrating one variable at a time. Either you can fix x, integrate out with respect to y and then integrate with respect to x or interchange, choice is yours. You can first integrate with respect to x and then with respect to y. So, the two iterated integrals for a function of two variables is equal to the double integral for non-negative measurable functions. So, this is called uh, first Fibonacci uh, theorem, uh, which helps one to integrate uh, functions of two variables. So, next we want to uh, uh, show that this result also holds for um, uh, functions which are integrable. So, we want to prove that for an integrable function, the corresponding result holds. So, let us look at the proof of that. So, let us uh, look at. So, let us take a function f, which is L 1 on x cross y. It is integrable with respect to um, x cross y and we want to say that, that the integral of f x y over x cross y d mu cross nu, we want to say that this integral on one hand is equal to, you can integrate first x y with respect to nu, we want to claim this with respect to y over y and then integrate out that with respect to x, so d mu x or one should be able to say that this is also equal to you take the function f x y integrate out the variable with respect to mu, so x and then integrate out with respect to y d nu of uh, y. We want to say that these two, this results hold. Now, for that on obvious, uh, if, if these equations are to hold where f is not necessarily non-negative. So, that means what? First of all, the inner integral, for example, integral of f x y with respect to y must exist. That means, we should be able to say for a function of two variables which is integrable, when I fix the variable x as a function of y that is integrable. So, that is integrable and then that gives us a function of x and then we should be able to say that is integrable with respect to x. And finally, these two are equal and similarly, the other uh, result must hold. So, the theorem uh, which we want to prove uh, is the following, namely that is called Fibonacci theorem 2. So, namely uh, if f is a, a integrable function, uh, f is a integrable. So, we want to prove the following that if f is an integrable function, then the following statements are true, namely 1 that for the function of two variables, if I fix either of the variable, then with respect to other variable, it is uh, uh, integrable. Not for all, but we are able to say that the function x going to f x y and y going to f x y for the other variables are integrable for almost all y and for almost all x. So, for almost all fixing of coordinate, uh, the other variable it becomes a function which is integrable with respect to the other one. So, that is one and then secondly, once these are integrable, you can integrate out. So, it says that the function y going to integral of f over x with respect to mu and similarly, the integral of y uh, f with respect to y, these two are defined almost everywhere and of course, they are defined almost everywhere and are integrable and hence, the third step says they are integrable and indeed the integrals, um, the iterated integrals are equal to the double integral. So, uh, we would like to prove this uh, 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 theorem. So, to prove this, let us uh, proceed as follows. So, we are given that the function f belongs to L 1 of x cross y. Let us write the positive and the negative parts of the function. So, f is equal to f plus the positive part minus the negative part okay? and the integral of f x y with respect to the product measure mu cross nu is equal to integral of the double integral of 
f plus with respect to the product measure minus the integral of the negative part d mu cross mu over x cross y. So, that is the definition of the integral. If f is integrable, then the integral of the function is nothing but the integral of the positive part minus the integral of the negative part of the uh, function. Okay. So, now let us look at them separately. So, f plus x y of course, d mu cross nu over x cross y. So, f plus is a non negative function, uh, is a non negative measurable function. So, by uh, by our uh, by the uh, uh, by the result Fubini's theorem 1, I can write this as integral over x okay, integral over y f plus x y integral over f x y d nu with respect to y and then d mu with respect to x. So, implies by Fubini's theorem 1 that is Fubini's theorem for non negative uh, measurable functions that integral of uh, a non negative measurable function can be computed um, by iterated integrals. So, this is and also equal to let us write the other one also you can interchange integral over x f plus of x y d mu x and d nu of y. So, that is uh, these two uh, this is for f plus we have used the Fibonacci theorem 1. And now, let us observe f being integrable this quantity is finite. Okay. So, all these integrals are finite uh, quantities. So, that means, so this these, all this being finite implies, so for example, the first one implies, so implies because of integrability that integral over x, integral over y f plus x y of d of nu y d mu x is finite. Now, so here is an important uh, observation that we have uh, all earlier proved that if the integral of a function is finite, then the function must be finite. So, here we are using integral finite implies function finite almost everywhere. So, this we had already proved. So, this fact we are going to use now. So, look at this inner uh, this integral with respect to mu of this function is finite. So, that implies that the function. So, x. So, this as a function of x, x going to integral over y of f plus x y d nu y is finite almost everywhere, almost everywhere with respect to x. Okay. So, we have used the fact that integrable function implies that the function is finite almost everywhere. And now, once again for almost all x this is finite. Okay. That means, so this also implies that the function. So, y going to f plus x y is finite almost everywhere and of course, integrable, because this integral is finite almost everywhere. So, it is a function which is integrable and finite almost everywhere. Okay. So, implies I can integrate it out and this is a non negative uh, function, it is integrable and non negative integrable function. So, we have for this uh, already seen this is equal to. So, that we have already seen that for a non negative measurable function this is equal to this integral. So, similarly a similar. So, similarly the function x going to uh, similarly uh, the function for x going to f plus x y is 
finite almost everywhere and integrable is also in there and the corresponding results also hold for uh, similar results holds for f minus okay so that means what so all those four functions so all the four functions are finite and uh, integrable so we can integrate them out okay and we have the results corresponding results for uh, so these are all integrable so that is the first part so that is the first part that these functions are integrable almost everywhere and uh, correspondingly in almost everywhere with respect to x and y and these functions uh, are also uh, defined and are integrable so so that means we have the following so they are all integrable and finite and for f plus x y uh, with respect to x cross y d mu cross nu we have got this is equal to the iterated integral with respect to x with respect to y of f plus x y d nu d mu okay and similarly for the negative part we have x y d mu cross nu x cross y is equal to integral over y integral over x of f minus x y d nu d mu so now we can uh, and all these are finite quantities because f plus and everything is integrable so these are all finite quantities this is finite and this is finite so i can take the difference of the two so the difference of the left hand side uh, so subtract second from the first so and use the fact that integrals are linear so the, the difference subtract implies okay subtraction and similarly uh, sorry and also uh, the corresponding uh, identities for the other one um, inter uh, interchange thing so this is also equal to integral over y integral over x of f plus d nu d mu right for non negative that is true so we'll subtract uh, this from this so we'll get integral of f d mu cross nu x cross y because integral of f plus minus integral of f minus is integral of f is equal to the iterated integral of f plus with respect to x y okay minus the iterated integral of f minus with respect to the same uh, iterated integral so that will give you y integral with respect to x of f of f plus minus f minus so that is f of x y d uh, nu d mu so that will prove that the for the integrable function the double integral is equal to the iterated in integral one of them the other proof is uh, similar so basically uh, this uh, result that for integrable functions the corresponding uh, interchange of uh, integrals hold is uh, basically uh, coming from the previous uh, result namely that the corresponding result holds for non negative sim, uh, sim, non negative measurable functions so what we have proved is two fubini's theorems fubini's theorem 1 and fubini's theorem 2 fubini's theorem 1 says that for non negative measurable functions the double integral the integral over the product space can be computed by integrating one variable at a time and similarly this can also be done uh, for functions which are integrable so we'll continue uh, this uh, fubini's theorem a bit more and then specialize it to for integrals for uh, r2 r3 and so on thank you